an alternative to whatever there is already. So what I propose um, to, to deliver is there is a certain way we are used to. There is a certain way some of us are used to, but uh, God has also outlined a better way for us. And I believe as we walk through the Bible, which is the supreme word of God, um, we will get the needed direction and advice that would help us. So shall we just bow our heads for a short prayer? My Lord and my Savior, I just want to thank you for tonight. I pray humbly that you would speak to our hearts and show us a better way to live. In Jesus' name, amen. As you can see tonight, uh, the title of tonight's presentation is Don't Be a Weakling. Don't Be a Weakling. This is important to me, especially when it comes to young people, young adults. You can't be a weakling because as you would find out from our presentation, if you find yourself with these kind of traits and characteristics, the Bible sees you as a weakling and even society sees you as a weakling, as a weak person. And it is God's desire that none of his children, none of us, should be judged by the world in that sense. So this evening, we are going to take time to reflect upon a personality in the Bible, a, a very renowned personality. And though this person accomplished a lot, he still was considered a weak person. So, you know, some people describe him as weak, a weak, strong man. And the person we're talking about is no other person than David's army commander, King David's army commander, whose name is Joab. How many of you, if, if you have heard of the name Joab, they just just, just, just show with a raising of your thumb, let me see. I know you, your cameras are off, but just raise, raise your thumbs and let me see. If you have heard of the name Joab. Hmm, it's quiet, I've not seen anything yet. Do I take it that none of you knows about Joab? Am I, am, I, am I engaging with some people out there? There is silence. Okay. Once there's silence, I'll continue. Joab, um, as I said earlier, the Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 11, verse 6, as being, or he won a competition that was organized by David to be the commander of his people. So as you can see, First Chronicles 11, verse 6 says, and David said to his troops, whoever is first to attack the Jebusites will become the commander of my, enemy, of my armies. And the Bible says, Joab, the son of David's sister Zeruiah, was the first to attack, and therefore he became the commander. In fact, the Bible actually says that David had Three strong men, three prominent men, and Joab was not part of them. After that, there was another classification of people who were considered as prominent leaders in David's army. And Joab's name was there, not there. So I do believe I do believe that Joab wanted to be known 
And therefore, when he got the opportunity, per the route that David has lined, it is no wonder that he rushed to take over. Because one, he was not part of, of, of the top class warriors. Either way, he performed his work well. He, he, Any time that they went to war, he was a good captain. So Joab was a good captain for David. However, he was also a problem for David and for the children of Israel. If you know your Bible stories well, you know that when Jesus was around among 12 of the disciples, he had two who were problem children. Even though all of them were problem children and disciples, two of them were, were troublesome to the extent that Jesus had to give them the names, the sons of thunder. We're talking about James and John. Likewise, David also had his problem. And his problem was not only limited to Joab, it was limited, it, it was extended to Joab and his two brothers. And these were the children of David's sister, Zaria. But Joab's problem outshadowed that of his brothers. And that is why the Bible unpicks these traits that were not good. Remember, we are talking about a strong man who is still considered as a weak man. This is how some of the Bible commentators or Bible scholars describe him. We look at the first characteristics of, of jo Joab. Joab is an unforgiving person. Joab is revengeful. And you can see in the story, the first story you can see about his attitude of not forgiving, his attitude of being revengeful. If you do me, I will do you. If, 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 you, if, you, if you step my toes, I will not forgive you. If you insult me, I will insult you back. That kind of characteristic is clearly demonstrated in Joab. In the sense that when Saul was king of Israel, his army commander was called Abner. And when Saul died, and Saul's son, Ephibosheth, was set up as a king in the ten regions of Israel, and only the children, only the city of Judah, will make David king. After some time, Abner realized that it was better to reconcile with David as the proper king. So Abner takes the steps to seek reconciliation and David accepts him. But prior to that, there had been a fight between Abner and Joab. And what happened was Abner managed to kill one of Joab's brothers in war or in battle. But after many years, when David eventually accepted Abner's reconciliation and they had reconciled and the whole of the country were happy that two strong prominent people who now work together as one, Joab was not prepared to forgive. So when Abner had had this reconciliation meeting with David and they had, they had settled the scores and Abner was on his way back, Joab will find a way to go and sell a lie to Abner. And then he meets Abner secretly somewhere. And in Abner's mind, he thought 
because there was reconciliation, they could speak as friends. Little did he know, as you can see in verse 27, to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak to him privately. And there stabbed him in the stomach so that he died for the blood of his brother Asahel. When Abner, a top commander, military commander, he knows how to go to fight. But he thought at this time there was peace and therefore there was no need for him to come to Joab with all the military preparations that he needed. Little did he know that Joab had not forgiven after all these years, even though David had forgiven, Joab was not prepared to forgive. He was so revengeful. And this caused a great problem for David. If you find time and you read 2 Samuel chapter 3, you would see how much pain This act that Joab would commit would do to David and the whole of the nation of Israel. Here was a strong man in the battlefield, but he had a big weakness. He could not forgive. He did not know of a better way. Let's go on the second point. He was selective in justice. Here, we know, you know, I'm sure you'd have heard of the story of Uriah, that David sends a letter to Uriah to go and give to Joab. And I want you to read 2 Samuel chapter 11 because it's too long. I, I wouldn't have time to do that. And when Uriah comes to Joab with his death sentence in his hand, he accepts it and ensures that Uriah is killed. But fast forward to Absalom. The same Joab is being given instruction by David and told that don't kill him. Don't kill him. But because of his selective justice, he will not listen and will kill Absalom. And as you can see from 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5, the instruction was clear. And the king gave this command to Joab and to these two people and said, do not kill the young boy. And the Bible says that when he gave the instruction, everyone had it. But Joab will not listen to the king. He will go and kill Absalom. Why? Because once again, his own forgiving attitude was playing up because when Elijah Absalom has bent his farm. So to, on this occasion, he will choose to disobey the king rather to revenge or avenge. So my question as we talk along is, I'm asking you as young people, I'm putting it across to you, could Joab not find a better to, way to deal with these is, issues that he had in life? Do you hear in the news about young people stabbing each other? Just a few minutes before this presentation, I was reading that as of July 2020, even with coronavirus, that people were stuck indoors. In London alone, 326 people, young people, have been stabbed 
chest using the knife. This is only knife crime. Could these people have not found a better way to deal with the problems that they had? And I believe as young people, as, 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 as young adults, there are some of us listening today in our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces, these unforgiving spirits are playing up. These unforgiving things are playing up. And you, you know the consequences when some of us form up cliques and tend to make life difficult for some of our friends in school. You know it. This does not show strength in you. That shows weakness. And God does not desire any of us to follow that. And that is why even Joab, after all his great exploits in war, was still considered a weak person. Let's jump to another trait of him which is jealousy. He, 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 he cannot appreciate the fact that somebody can be considered before him. And here, once again, we look at another example in the person of Amasa. Amasa was chosen by Absalom to be his commander. And when he was chosen, we all know that eventually Absalom was defeated. But you see, David, as the leader of Israel, was so forgiving. David was always seeking to seek reconciliation. So even though he knew that Amasa had been chosen by Absalom to work against him, he eventually forgave Amasa and got Amasa to work with him. But here, once again, Joab will not be happy with that. And because Joab refused to listen to the king, not to kill Absalom, the king demoted him and chose Amasa to be his new captain. So just imagine somebody who does not forgive, realizing that one of his colleagues have been chosen ahead of him. The Bible tells us in 2 Samuel chapter 19 that Amasa was sent by David on a mission. Sadly, Amasa delayed for whatever reasons. The Bible does not tell us, but all the Bible says that he, was, he delayed in his journey or the tax that David had given him. But David then sent Joab on a different mission. And perchance, per I don't know, I don't know the journey, I don't know the, the, the path, I don't know the routes. But we are told that Joab and Amasa meet, one heading on a journey on a different mission, one coming back home from the mission. And we read the narrative in 2 Samuel chapter 19, from 9 to 10. And it says, Then Joab said to Amasa, Are you okay, my brother? And Amasa, thinking, thinking that, listen, I work with this guy in the same infantry. I'm in the same barracks with this guy. I, we, we, we serve the same king. We work together. I believe he considered the conversation as a friendly conversation. After all, you are heading on your mission. I am heading back home for my mission. But we read that 
Joab had a different motive. And when Amasa kind of got closer to talk to him, what did he do? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. But Amasa did not notice the sword that was in Joab's hand. And he struck him with it in the stomach. And he died. Can you just imagine this? How low will Joab sink? Just for his own selfishness, anyone and everyone that in his mind he thinks will be in his way has to be eliminated. Boy or girl, young or old, in Joab's mind, such a person needs to be killed. And I'm talking about this as young people seriously because there are most of us who call ourselves Christians, who are being brought up in Christian homes, and we are holding on to these traits of Amasa, traits of jealousy. We become jealous of our friends, other people, because they have made friends with our friends. We become jealous of people because we, they have become friends. We thought they should not be welcome into, into, our, into our groupings. And other friends thought it otherwise and have welcomed them in. And therefore, you do everything possible to make their life difficult. These are not what God wants from us. And God is, is, is making you aware tonight that if you exhibit these traits, you are a weak person in God's eyes. And in the eyes of society, you are weak. And therefore tonight, that is why I'm advising you, don't be a weakling. Don't be revengeful. Don't be, don't be somebody who is selective in your justice. Don't be somebody who is jealous of people. And, and, and don't be disloyal. Look at all that Joab would do to, 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 to David. David, King David, still had patience and, and, and bore with him. But you know, when David was about to die, and Joab knew that Solomon was going to be king. Joab will work behind King David and go and take a different person, Adonijah, one of David's sons, rather to be king. Why? Because in his mind, he could manipulate Adonijah. In his mind, he could be somebody that, 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 that can get away with whatever he wants to do. And therefore, even though he knew who the right person would be, Joab would be disloyal to David and go and work against David. Are you disloyal to your family? Are you disloyal to your friends? Are you even disloyal to your church? How positive do you speak about your family? How positive do you speak about your friends or your brother or your sister? How positive do you even speak about your church? And how easy is it for you to switch camps because of what you want and not for the greater good of everyone? Here was a top commander, but all his morals were so weak. As we get to the end of my presentation, any person who takes the path of evil ends up in an evil way. So Adonijah, even though Joab does a palace coup, 
to try to make Adonijah a king, he fails. And when Solomon became a king, he gave Joab a chance. But as from all that I've told you, you would know that Joab will not take it. And for his selfishness sake, he had to break the rules that Solomon had done, had given him. So we are told that when he heard that the people that he had teamed up with were being called to account for their actions, he ran into the church, the house of God, to, to seek refuge and protection there. But saints and young people, running into the church of God alone doesn't save. When you have not surrendered yourself to Jesus Christ, just running or going to church alone doesn't save. Joab didn't know the difference that he had to surrender his heart and his mind and his actions to God to be saved. And the mere running into the temple of God would not save him. And when Solomon heard that, Solomon asked that he should be killed in the temple. And actually, that is what Joab requested for. And Solomon granted his wish. So look at this top commander, one who led David to great wars. He could not die as a national hero. He could not die as a celebrated commander. He could not die with his family beside his bed or giving him a befitting burial. He had to die running for his life and deceiving himself that if he should run into the house of the Lord and hold up the altars, his life will be spared. But no, his life will not be spared. Why? Because there was something intrinsically wrong with him. And young people, I know in, the, in, in this climate, we talk about mental health issues and stuff. I believe from whatever I have narrated, you can see that Joab had one of these problems or he had a problem. You know, recently I came across this research that for one to be considered as being well, holistically well, you need to be well emotionally, physically, financially, intellectually, occupationally, environmentally, socially, spiritually. So it is, it's, it's a package, but you can see from the very top that Joab emotionally was not sound. Even though physically he was strong, he could go to wars and win. Even though probably he was paid well for doing that job. I don't even think intellectually he's up there. Yes, he might have the strategies for war, but we are told that most of the strategic plans were drawn by David. But let me give him a bit of credit. But for the fact that he could not discern to find better ways to deal with issues, Joab could not be considered as intellectually good. Was he good in his occupation? You can tell. Socially, how, how was he considered? The fact that any wonder you come across, you just pull a knife and stab the person to death. Spiritually, you could see that he was nowhere near what God would have required. And that is why tonight I say to you, don't be a weakling. 
Don't let your friends, don't let society, don't let your family, don't, don't let things that you see on TV, don't let things that you read through Instagram, Facebook, and whatever, don't let those things be the things that will define you and lead you to make decisions. Be guided by the word of God. Be guided by God's word that would make you a strong person and not a weakling. So as I conclude, God gives us two advices. There are two forms of advice that God offers to us in the Bible. And one is found in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13. It says, a merry heart makes a joyful countenance outlook, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. You, could, you can see from this text that Joab was a person that was filled with sorrow. He, he, he did not have any joy in his life. His, his whole life was about just, you could see a moody person. If only he knew that God says that, keep a smile on your face. Make yourself a happy person. Keep a cheerful outlook, a cheerful countenance. His well-being would have changed. He would have dealt with mental, mental health issues properly. Then he dealt with them. So God offers you and I a solution. Keep a cheerful spirit. Listen, enjoy life. Let life bring its positives into, your, into you as a young person, a young adult. Let life, the joy of the Lord, fill your heart. And then you will see that there is a better way to live than what we have seen tonight. And then the last scripture says, once again, a merry heart does good like medicine. But the sad or the broken spirit dries your bones. You become sick. You experience headache. You, you don't feel well within your, your, your body. Why? Because you are always moody. You are always complaining. You, you are always upset. You are always angry. Why? Because Satan has painted and given you a way that you think is the, is the best way. But God offers a better way. Keep a cheerful heart. Keep a merry heart. Keep a, a, a joyful spirit within you. Why? Because it tastes like medicine. It treats you and makes you see things from a better, better perspective than what Joab saw and what others are seeing. It is my prayer tonight that anyone at the sound of my voice will choose to find a better way to deal with issues in their life than to resort to quick actions like talking back, like, like cursing, like insulting, like ganging up with friends to, 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 to make somebody's life miserable and all kinds of stuff. None should be said of you as God's children. But what should be said of you is that this young girl always keeps a smile. This young lady is a reconciler. This young guy speaks words of encouragement rather than words of division because that is what God desires for us. May God bless each one of us and may God work on our hearts to keep a merry heart so that we will enjoy life to the fullest. Thank you. Um, as I said, I'll leave the space, the next few minutes that we have for Q&As. Um, <clears throat> once again, I cannot see your faces, nothing. But if you have a question, please feel free, unmute yourself, and then let's have a chat.
I don't know who the coordinator, but if somebody can. Uh, Ruth, can you? Uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm just waiting to see if any questions are coming through. If you don't have any question and there's somebody who can make a contribution to what we've spoken about, please feel free. It's not really about questions, but contributions are also welcome. Please. You know, because of time, we have not been able to break things down well, but um, I hope the little that I've shared. Um, okay, so any contribution, any question, just feel free. We are looking at it from a better way. Anyone has any contribution? If 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 you can't talk, you can type your question. Feel free. If if you don't want to talk, you can type in your question, please. I'll read it out and then we'll talk about it. Or you can send your questions to me and I can read them out. Okay, thank you. That's also an offer up there. Does, does anyone have a question regarding this? Um, what uh, Pastor just presented to us today. Uh, feel free to speak. Um, any question that you like to, to ask Pastor? Um, yeah. You're 20 minutes. Okay, Pastor Godfrey, if no one is talking, um, can you can we can you lead us in a prayer session? Then we can probably bring our session to a close. I don't know if you have a contribution, but if not, then just enter a period of uh, prayer session. Then yeah, um, yes, um, but what? Unfortunately, I came later, um, so uh, oh, okay. I'll later apologize yeah. for that. But um, the 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 last bit that um, I had. Was um was about a uh, cheerful heart, uh, and I think that we we all need um uh, this kind of spirit, uh, a cheerful heart spirit, uh, because the world is full of uh, chaos, <laughs> the world is uh, full of uh, uh, distress, and then you know all these things from from education wise, as you you know you may you may sometimes feel frustrated, um, and it's not easy. Uh, so I think uh, the 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 basic idea of uh, praying to God uh, to have a cheerful heart is very important because it's it really supports you to move forward, and I, and and I pray that um, I mean we all can you know can have this. I mean personally, sometimes it's just life is sometimes frustrated, you know, because uh, you face certain uncertainty. Sometimes uh, you like God to you know uh, reveal things to you, um, and that time you know you just feel that. Perhaps your your prayers are not answered, or you don't know what what to do, and all this is be stressful. All this, are, um, I mean, they all bring, uh, bring frustration. But I do believe that um, um, when God is involved, uh, although we don't see what is what is ahead of us, but we know that God knows what is ahead of us. So this this kind of trusting in God uh, brings this cheerful heart. Uh, so I believe that uh, I mean this 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 uh, this is what I would like to just comment about it. Uh, Anthony, uh, Ruth, Marco, Kelvin, so Francisca as well. Any uh, do you have any question or any contribution that you'd like to to ask Pastor or share? Um no. Okay, it, it's uh it's, it's not with you. 
closed downstairs. Okay. Uh, Ruth? Um, no, I don't have anything else to say. I can't hear you. No, I don't have anything to add. Okay. Um, Marco and Kelvin? I'm on call, I don't have anything to say. Okay, uh, please wait for Francisco. I have a question either. Okay, thank you, Marco. Uh, where, where, where's Francesca? I saw her. Uh... Oh, she's right here. Yeah, my phone died. Back. Oh, sorry. Do you, do, do you have any question, Francesca? Or any, any concern? Um, okay, then maybe I, maybe I would like to ask what you guys you know understood from this uh, this presentation. Um, I mean, what are you taking home tonight? Uh, if you have any anything to say, maybe we can start from Ethne, and then later I'll ask Nana uh, and Priscilla uh, if they also have something to say. So, uh, Anthony, what 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 do you take home today? What's your take for today? Um, I think that um, pretty much that you shouldn't. Sorry. No yeah. Problem. So you should. Sorry. No, I said no problem. No problem. Oh, um, that you shouldn't like do bad things with your friends. I heard, and that you should uh, let God yeah be in your life. Mm, okay. Yes. Yes, that's that's true. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Ruth. Um, I would say that what I would take home is that even if we are like conflicted, or like, even if we think we are strong, we shouldn't let things like jealousy and um, like uncertainty or just negative emotions take the better of us to the point where we are seen as weak. Mm. Okay. Um, did you guys hear her? Because I, I couldn't hear. Um, I'll, I'll say it again. I yes, don't yes. It's, it's better now. Okay. Yeah, I don't know Thank why I'm supposed to do this like this. I said that um, even if we are like considered strong or like we hold strong positions, we shouldn't let negative emotions like jealousy or like anger cloud us um, for us to do something like regretful and just to make us be seen as weak in God's and society's eyes. Mm. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Clear and loud. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Marco? Hey there, Marco. 